everyone. I think that, yes, we are live. Hi, everyone. I'm Donna Lynn Hilton, producer for Good Speed Musicals. Hi, Dan. Hello. Hi, Donna Lynn. Hi, everybody. Um, you know, we wanted to start with showing off our new look. Uh, for those of you that uh, have been with us for the past couple of weeks, this probably looks different, but it's so exciting for us because you know, we're, we're trying to up our game. We started this whole online event thing in the dark. We jumped into it because we wanted to stay connected to all of you guys. But uh, what we're, you know, realizing is we're still good speed and we have to do things the best we possibly can. So we researched and found this really powerful, really low cost software that makes yeah. us all look good. So you're going to see better, <laughs> a better look, uh, we look better, a better, better video, video most of all uh, is the important thing. And so now and we have other tools we'll play with, so it's going to get better and better as we go on. Yeah. yeah, we're really excited to give it a try, and we hope that you enjoy the results. So we have a treat tonight. I know I say that every week when we start this program, but we are in for a real treat tonight, revisiting <clears throat> our 2011 production of Showboat. Um, before we bring in our special guest tonight, let me tell you that if you have questions or comments, you can enter them into the comment section on the right side of your screen. If you have any problems, getting to that comment section, you can text comments to a number that is going to be, there it goes. You can text Look at by that. 860-638-7157. And for anyone who thinks they recognize that phone number, yes, you do. It is our company management cell phone put into different service right now. So we look so uh, professional. Look at this. We do. I'm so impressed the Good Speed Broadcasting right. Center. <clears throat> All right. Let's get on to our main event tonight. Uh, please welcome our guest, Goodspeed's former resident musical director and the music director of our showboat, Michael O'Flaherty, and the producing artistic director of Theater Works up in Hartford, our good friend and the director of our showboat, Rob Ruggiero. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so How's happy everyone? to be here. We're happy to have you. Hey, Moff, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well. Very well. We are it's in for to see you guys. Today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I can kick it off, um, Donalyn, Rob, Moff, this wasn't a script that you took off the shelf and said, let's just do Showboat. How did this come about? <laughs> well, if I if I may, before we answer that question, because it'll make Donalyn laugh. And I think I, uh, I remember uh, Donalyn calling me, Sue, and saying, you know, are you interested in Showboat? And I was like, can I take a look at the material? <laughs> and I went. <laughs> well, you know, 1927, you think about it as this, you know, dusty old show, but it was one of the most profound experiences I had because there's no really definitive script. And our friend Ted Chapin told, you know, all of us here, what do you, you know, we sat down at a table, right, Michael Flaherty? And we, like, what do you want to do with it? Right. It was such an invitation. First, we had to get past the, you want to do what with just about anybody that we said showboat to. <laughs> I have a long history with showboat. It was the first show I ever stage managed. And so I have, it has a deep, deep spot in my heart. And, you know, I am a, a firm believer that we can do anything at good speed, absolutely anything. You want to do singing in the rain? Sure, we'll make it rain on stage. You want to do a showboat? Well, you can't do showboat without a showboat. We can do a showboat on stage at good speed. And, and so people look at me askance a lot, um, but we put showboat on the list of, of titles in discussion that year and it came out on top. So um, Rob's telling the truth. I called him and said, what do you think of Showboat? And he went, I don't know. And a long time <laughs> later, it, it came to fruition. It was a massive hit for us, a massive Huge. Hit yeah. yeah. It, it, really it was. was. Well, I think that's one of the, you, you hit on one of the key successes, though. From the beginning, it was a showboat for good speed. Right. It was always, every choice was made not to create something, you know, extraordinary, which it ended up being in some ways, um, but to do something for good speed and 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 good speed. When you those who are watching who love the theater like us, it feels just like the showboat. So using the opportunity to make good speed itself the showboat during the show scenes right. was a key of the experience. But we still had to get a showboat. Thank God. Thank you, Michael Schweikart. 
We had to get the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's, our, our audience loves the video clip. So let's, we have a bunch of B-roll clips that we're going to show tonight. So, well, we have like six B-roll clips we're going to show tonight. Um, so let's take a look at the first clip that we pulled. Um, this is a piece of make-believe. People who, I can't believe anybody might not know Showboat, but someone may not. So um, set on board the Cotton Blossom, Captain Andy Hawk's Showboat on the Mississippi River. Um, Magnolia is his teenage daughter. And she has just met uh, Ravenel on the a wayfarer, a wayfarer on along the river on the on the dock, and uh, and they have a little scene and song. So here's a piece of make believe. Sarah Barry and Ben Davis. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It brings uh, back memories, doesn't it? It does. I mean, you know, I still do a lot of shows with Ben and they look so, both look so young. And, I know. but um, uh, I was thinking about you, Michael O'Flaherty, while I was watching that, because, you know, Michael wow. is an amazing collaborator. And I remember the different tempos we tried for that. And you ultimately advocated for the brighter. And I, you were right, feels youthful. But what I want to point out is the playfulness of Sarah because Showboat, when it was first done, like the, it was like that number was they met, they fell in love, they sang about love. What was great about what we did is that they fell in love during the song and it was a game. And I think that set the tone for the, and the rest of the show. We made every musical number continue the story like they do now a days in new musicals. Right. And it's ultimately we're gonna we're gonna get all the way to the end of the show before this night is over. And it's ultimately so moving. Even now, looking at it, you know, almost 10 years later, it's so moving still that that relationship was so real and so beautiful. So we saw there, I, I intentionally picked a clip that let us see the whole showboat pretty early on in this evening. Um, the showboat. So let's go back to that. Can you share do you remember, Rob, the conversations that led us to that? Set design? Um, well, you know, Michael Schweikart, so smart about everything. And we knew that, you know, we needed a show about <laughs> and <laughs> that we knew that, uh, I mean, the economy of space, the economy of cast, you know, it's one of the most produced showboats now, which we'll get to. At the small showboat is 25 people, <laughs> which I love that it's considered a small showboat. But I remember that we knew that it couldn't go away and it retracted, which was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. But we were able to transform it not only to the Dock, to the uh, whatever they called it, I would say dock, the, the, you know, that part of the exterior of the boat, but it became many other locations. Yeah. And uh, as well as we were able to put things in front of it in times. But right. and it was sort of beautiful. I remember a lot of conversations about, you know, it's never going to go away. Are we okay with that? And ultimately, it was beautiful that it never went away. It, it was a presence throughout the entire show. And that was really powerful. It was. It was. It really made a statement. You know, the whole thing when you when we had to find a way in, and maybe Michael can speak to this a little bit more. But you know, I I knew for us it was going to be about a family because it's always really comes down to family, but a show business family. And I think the way that we told the story, we always came back to making sure that it was the journey of this family, and this family existed on this boat, right, Michael? Yes. 
Yes. And there's a lot of other extraneous action and characters and things that we just eventually eliminated because it, it, it was unnecessary. And uh, in the opening number, for instance, we there, there were crowds and people and, and it, it, we just couldn't do it. It, it. it would have taken 40 people to, to make it happen instead of 25. Yeah. So by concentrating just on that family, it, it certainly tightened it up. And, you know, the... I, the audience in the opera house became the crowd on the dock, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And the, the well of the opera house really became more. part of it. Sorry, Rob. No, sorry. This is the trick of these, right? No, I was saying it makes it feel real. It made it feel very immersive, kind of ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, can we look you at know. another clip of uh, my favorite, you know, the most famous song from the show, Old Man River? Uh, our clip, you know, the, the show featured, uh, it, the song is David Aaron Damani and Joe, uh, it was Joe, and then Kyle Bear, Richard Waits, and Nicholas Ward were the stevedores. And I, I used to run into the theater to watch this every time I could. And let's, can we look at that? I'll, I'll tell people to pay particular attention to the ovation at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go away from the white man boss. Show me that stream called the River Jordan. That's the old stream that I long to like that every performance, <sighs> right? Wow. Oh, you know, looking at Nicholas there too, well, David and I still keep in touch, brilliant, you know, and he still could play that role again. He's, a, you know, amazing. But Nicholas was in Frozen recently. Oh, we saw him together. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did. Um, so, Michael Flaherty, talk a little bit about the orchestration because you'd think Showboat, how on, uh, uh, how is Goodsby going to recreate that sound is certainly mm. one of the questions that person would ask. Well, we didn't really try to necessarily recreate, you know, the, the what it must have been 35 piece orchestration originally. And uh, Dan DeLang, our orchestrator, just kind of went his own way with, with Rob and, and my uh, input. But uh, it was was it eight? I guess I, I don't I don't honestly remember. I, I, I should have looked it up. I guess I before we got nine, on. Counting you, nine on this nine. one. Yeah. Um, 
I, I know we, we did use some keyboards, right, to fill it up. But uh, but the idea was to make it a showboat, again, that fit the opera house, uh, similar to what we do with most shows. Although some of the bigger, brassier shows, we, we try to emulate the the feeling of, of Mame and Dolly and those things. But but this one, we didn't really go for that. It needed heft and power, but it but it also needed uh, simplicity and, and uh, sort of transparency, which I think we achieved, you know. I mean, Dan is a genius, that's, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. Not you, Dan, but the- Oh, I am too, but I'll take it. too, but uh, Dan DeLang is, is our resident genius orchestrator. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, it was interesting to hear that again. I, I haven't I haven't heard or seen any of this in, in all these years, but um, it sounded pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Shall we look at Can't Help Loving That Man? Sure. Okay, so let's take a look at another well-known song from the show, Can't Help Loving That Man, featuring Leslie Margarita as Julie, Sarah Berry as Magnolia, and Andrea Frierson as Queenie. Oh, listen, sister, I love my Mr. Man, and I can't tell you why. There ain't no reason why I should love that man. We use that clip so much for a promotion. 
<laughs> and, you know, it turns out that that song, I didn't realize till later how significant that song was in the plot because uh, it really was a black community song. And the fact that we learned in the show that Julie knew it because she was mixed race, which then later in the show causes trouble and she and her husband get kicked off the boat. They can't perform to the segregated audience, which moves us right into that Magnolia taking the part and falling in love with Ravenel, which we could go right into that next clip if we like, the two we of could. them. We could, we could. Right. We have a question. So we get the question <clears throat> in about, um, oh, Rob, are, Rob is frozen. Oh, oh my goodness, he's gone out. Hopefully, he mentioned the show and became frozen. I guess so. <laughs> Michael Flaherty, you can take this one. I think yeah. uh, the question is um, p that our audience remembers Old Man River being a uh, quartet. I mean, being a solo originally. Has it always was it? Did we make it a quartet for our production? Is the question? No, in in the show, it it always was a quartet. The, the stevedores were always on stage with him and sang back up with with uh, with uh, Joe, but. Uh, I, Going back to Can't Help Loving That Man, we, a lot of people didn't understand why we did it as fast as we did it because they now people think of Can't Help Loving That Man as a ballad. You know, it's always done as a torch song, usually by just a solo woman, you know, and and uh, it, it sort of had its own life as that. But that's not how the song was originally conceived or written. And that whole dance break and all that, that was actually part of the original where they shuffle. Oh. They do the shuffle, the buck and wing kind of shuffle thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was the tempo that the song was written to be performed in. It, it wow. was just, most people don't know that and, and they're taken aback by it because they think it's a, you know, we're playing fast and loose with it and it should be a ballad, but it doesn't need to be a ballad at all. It, right. That wasn't the original. And the choreography idea. was by Noah Racy, which I absolutely loved, you know, because yeah. he had even less of a stage than normal with the big boat on the stage yeah. and it yeah. turned out so well. Did you miss me? Terribly, yeah. but we're glad that you got back. Oh so my back. God, that's not <laughs> happened. I think it was. My, I think it was me. Something happened here in yeah, West. We're Carson. all very um, not good. We're very much more consistent than we have been on our other platform, which yeah. shall remain nameless. No, I think <laughs> um, that was me. So okay. my, it was something that happened here. Okay, so we're gonna, Dan, you were handing it off beautifully. We're gonna look at the next um, clip we have, which is uh, again, Magnolia and Ravenel, late in the first act, um, their big love song. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at that. <laughs> so beautiful. Right, they sound amazing. Uh, you know, I, watching that clip reminded me, though, like, again, like, when you, if you don't know the show and you've listened to some of the old recordings, those, some of those songs sound a little stilted, but it was so passionate and it, and it was period and passionate and it just soared and, um, and they were, their chemistry was amazing together. Yeah, I will say that's, you know, I was so, happy with this production because you did exactly what we knew you would do with it that you would find that truth in this story and Thank reveal you. it in our on our stage <clears throat> so intimately you did exactly what we knew you would do with it and what you've done so beautifully for us many 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 times thank you you know i worked hard at that and it was really fulfilling to 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 do a showboat that was led by story. And when it has that amazing score, when it has a really great book, and it was very satisfying. I was thinking watching these clips, you know, 
thinking ahead to, to South Pacific, that another show that is kind of predicated on a lot of racial tension. And I know I clicked off, but I have to say watching Can't Help Loving That Man was so moving to see Sarah, you know, down in the kitchen, which was the boat, by the way, looking at the set, you know, in the kitchen with her family and where she felt so like she belonged there. And it's so beautiful. The lines were not, were so blurred, not blurred for her. They, you know, and Queenie and Joe became um, an essential part of the show as well. And we brought them back at the end. So. Yes. Michael, you had. A I just want to talk about when you were saying about the, the the reality of it and how how warm it was. Part of that had to do with with you, Rob has a specific thing about keys, where he doesn't really like tenors and really high sopranos, and and it actually made a huge difference in this because normally Ravenall and Magnolia are killer tenor and killer soprano, and we brought all those keys down and put Ravenel in more baritone range and, and she's still soprano range, but but it, it just, it's in a warmer place in both of their voices. So it's not about showing off the voice, it's about interacting with each other and and dealing with the meaning of the song and 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 the love story. And it, it really does make a difference. Hearing it again for the first time in a long time, how much warmer it sounds in that key. Yeah, That's all. <laughs> yeah, great point. I learned something tonight. So there were a lot, there were several significant revisions that we were allowed to make to the show um, with, the, with the input of Ted Chapin, who was the president of Rogers and Hammerstein organization that licensed Showboat, and um, with Bruce Pomahack, who was the longtime director of music for RNH. But the, I guess it's fair to say the biggest revision was the top of Act Two. So can the two of you speak to um, what choices were made and why? We made them. Um, we have a piece of the show to show, a piece of the top of the act to show, but talk a little bit about wh where, why we landed where we did, please. Uh, I'll start, I guess, if it's okay, Michael. The, you know, it, it was the thing that changed most dramatically. There were, we combined the last few scenes, we cut some scenes, all that stuff. And, but we, um, we, we couldn't do the World's Fair, so it started there. And and knowing that we couldn't do that, we needed to do something. So, so we had to find just, a way. Just to explain to everybody that the, the original show begins, the second act begins at the Chicago World's Fair, and it's about what twenty minutes of of material that is massive amounts of huge crowd scenes and you know side shows and all that kind of stuff and enormous amounts of music, and we just couldn't possibly accomplish it. So anyway. Right. Right. And also, I, you know, this was a story centric and, you know, production. And so the inspiration, I love to tell the story because we had to get from the wedding, you know, through the birth to the boarding house. So the, the goal wedding is the end of act one. Yeah, wedding is the end of act one. And we knew that the show proper, we had to finally get to the boarding house. So when they're newly married and she gives and, you know, in, uh, on the boat, they in, in, what is it, about 20 minutes? I have 15 minutes, I don't know. She had to, she had, she had to, they, she gave birth, they, they got some money, they moved to Chicago, um, they went from riches back to rags, it all, and we had to come around. And I have to give a big shout out um, to Ted Chapin, who, you know, trusted us, and he, he really invited that, and we, he, but we did have to go in front of Alice Hammerstein and Julie Gilbert, I should interrupt you to say that Ted is listening tonight. Oh, hi, Ted. And we 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 investigated whether or not we could bring him in, but I, we don't think we can. Uh, but he's he he. That's what he says. Showboat caused Alice Hammerstein to fall in love with Goodspeed, and that this is true. Her children endowed a uh, renovation to oh. rehearsal building, which is named after her. It now. is. It's the a, Hammer Alice Hammerstein yeah. Matthias rehearsal studio. Thank you, Ted. We got to, that's like I got to meet them, and we Michael Flaherty and I performed the opening of Act Two in Ted's offices. In <laughs> Several but times, if I recall. It really yeah. was, it was inspired by my love of Barbara Streisand and Funny Girl and the Sadie Sadie Mary Lady sequence. Cause you know, she sings like on the boat and then she's waiting and then within a 
bunch of montage moments. <laughs> they get married, and before you know it, she's pregnant and the paint in the nursery, and she has the baby, and he loses his shirt. So that was there. And so we took songs that existed. I looked at the novel, I looked at the movie, Moff and I dug into all the music and he is so brilliant at like, I need something to get from here to there. But it started with, I think Moff, and correct me if I'm wrong though, it started with the kind of outline and text and little yeah. scenes yeah. that I put yeah. together and I wanted the uh, uh, Parthi scene in there when there were letters. And so we did that and then we played with musical point of view. And some of the songs were in there twice with two points of view and we played with tone. And it all was this beautiful montage that I I, I believe works. I mean, it's now been done at quite a few places and yeah. it's one of, you know, I got to be a director and an, ad, an adapter also, which is really fun. But it was um, an amazing journey. I remember we had it together, roughly. We performed it one time for just Ted and Bruce. And Bruce was great. Ted, Ted always has smart things to say. And Bruce, musically, I remember he was he took something and was playing with the well, water motif, right? I was going to say, he, Bruce Pomahack, who, who was a longtime employee at, at Roger and Hammerstein, he's the one that came up with the idea. We, we were having trouble finding uh, uh, interstitial material that would connect all the songs and he said why don't you try to find a, a way of creating the river uh, some, something that sounded like the water and the river and flowing and i actually have the piano so i'm gonna play and, oh. and oh it, up, <laughs> it was a, a, a just with that old man river under it with that and when then we were in another song Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you'll hear if, if we are we going to hear the whole thing we just we're not going to hear the whole thing we we're, oh, okay but we're not but, allowed to play the whole thing but we have a okay. piece of the b-roll but that that little lead motif actually appears uh, maybe six seven times in the course of this 12 minute piece so now we know what to look idea. for we'll listen yeah, to this piece and then we can yeah. talk about it some more so what people are not going to see at the top of the act it opens with ravenel at a at a poker uh, uh, he's gambling Hard playing cards i believe with another group of men he is successful we transition to the interior of the boat where a magnolia has just had the baby and he rushes in late for the birth as he is always late for everything important and um and they sing um uh why do i love you Yes. Yes. Why do I? Love why do you? I love you? A little, a little bit of why do I love you with with the baby in her arms, and then we transition to misery. So that's where we're gonna pick up. Okay. Okay. All right. Bling when you're ready.
How astray the Lord with just the turn of a wheel or the flip of a card as my guide. I'll let fate decide if I walk or ride. All right, gentlemen, all bets in. High stakes tonight. I noticed you haven't been doing so well lately, Gay. You can't have that much left to lose. I'm feeling lucky tonight, gentlemen. Never better, never gain. Enough caution, it is plain. Fortune will change life in a for day. Red 19. So I will wait till good luck comes my So then we go up onto the back onto the bow. Older Andy and Parthy. Uh, they we learn a lot about Ready? how things are going in Chicago from a letter that Magnolia has written to them. And then we go back to Chicago, where Magnolia has been abandoned in the boarding house. In the boarding house, yeah. And the letter scene. Ted will correct me if he's on here, but I think the letter scene came from the movie. I don't know, but it wasn't in every version. Um, and I really liked the letter scene. I like because it brought the, the you know, Parthi and Andy back in. And, and but I have to give you the biggest shout out because I'll because I really do. The you know we were struggling with that moment with Ravenel and Magnolia, and to make it clear that he had lost money with the gambling stuff's clear. But I was just looking for that moment, and it was Donna Lynn Hilton who suggested. The earrings, like these beauty that were big diamond earrings. And it was like, it ended up being like really one of the short list of my favorite moments. And then I hear Ben Davis is on. I mean, yeah, he is. Ben, in your prime. Just um, a great <laughs> cast. <laughs> it was a great cast. It, it was. was. And Ben was, you were so great. Yeah. And Michael Price is with us too. Oh, Michael Price. Uh, yeah, it was Thank really you. special, you know. Um, special production and it was, journey. It was. Yeah, it really but was. isn't that beautiful? Sorry, but you got to see the, the versions of the songs and how Moth tonally and tempo wise and, and orchestrally we were able to tell the story. I think there was a total of three or four tunes mixed in there. Actually, five. Five. There were five. Yeah. But you know, it's that piece is much better when you and I perform it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a special member only event. Yeah. That'll be the revival. <laughs> we did it four times, I think, for for at, at R and H. But now every year at the MDI with the Music Direction Intensive, he and I perform it for them to to show them, you know, uh, uh, an example of uh, musical arrangement. Yeah. And we're brilliant at it. We're, we were, <laughs> we're considering taking it on the road, but I don't. 
Uh, All right. Well, we promised people that this event will not take up their entire evening if they log in. So we're going to start to head toward wrapping up here. Uh, we have one more clip, but I have decided that I want it to actually be the uh, finale of the show. Stay on, everybody. We have one more clip. Don't go away. We have one more clip. I know I say that and people start logging out. Um, so, uh, but first, let me offer a special thank you to all of our members and subscribers who have donated their ticket refunds for the 2020 season um, back to good speed. We um, could not um, survive at this time without your support. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you want to do more, you can go to goodspeed.org. Uh, and Dan, you're going to tell us what's coming up next week. Yeah, next week, please join us. Um, great speed next Tuesday night, same time. Same place, well, you'll get a link for the same place. We're going to talk about Holo Dolly. Uh, our guest will be Goodspeed's Dolly, uh, Dolly Levi and Horace Vandegelder, uh, Clea Blackhurst, and Tony Sheldon's going to join us from Australia where he lives. So now we're going transcontinental for these we events. Are. So please be here. And Daniel Goldstein, the director, is coming too. We are. All right. So we're going to do one last clip for you and you won't see us again. So let me say thank you, Rob and mom. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a joy to see your faces always. Uh, and to our audience, thank you. Stay safe. We'll get back to work for you just as soon as we can. And in the meantime, here's the finale of Goodspeed's 2011 production of Showboat.